go. Talking this morning with Chad Burroughs, Baroque with Fire Chief. How long have you been Fire Chief? I believe seven. It'll be going on seven years now. Um, so uh, we're here to talk about the fire station, um, uh, fire department in general, and what you guys do. Um, this facility um, has been here since, what year did they move in here, do you know? 90, I think 94 or 96, somewhere in there. So really, a lot of the discussion happening right now at the city level about the fire department kind of centers around, you got a grant from Senator Tammy Baldwin's office through their, I guess it's their earmark process, and uh, $5.25 million, Correct. Um, a, a great thing to have and come your way. So in the, over the last year and a half, two years, you guys have been looking at to build a fire station. So over the last year and a half to two years, you've been looking at, okay, what can we do with that? Um, that that's a huge windfall for the city. Absolutely. Um, but it's gotten a little complicated because um, as you've laid out, okay, what does the city of Roque would need moving forward for a fire department? What would a facility look like? And you've gone through a a bunch of different uh, possibilities and designs. Uh, kind of picked out a spot, um, city land that's close to the uh, Wild West Days grounds that the city already owns. Correct. Um, so that, that piece is kind of settled, but um, in the process of designing this, the costs are coming in anywhere from eight and a half million, maybe up to nine and a half million, someplace in that range. Oh. Um, so that, that means that somehow the city has to make up for that cost difference. So um, that's caused a lot of discussion uh, amongst the city council and people in the community. So just talk a little bit about um, uh, what's potentially going into that building and what the needs are for, for the fire department moving forward. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So w when this all started, we originally, uh, if ever, everybody remembers when the police department decided to move out and they got them a new building or whatever, there was an evaluation done on that. And there was a lot of uh, shortfalls with the building. And that's the building we're in now. That's the building we're in now. So the discussion went from there of if it was shortcomings for the police mm -hmm. department, obviously it's shortcomings mm -hmm. for the fire department. And so, you know, one, one thing led to another. We evaluated looking at uh, um, adding on and, and remodeling this current building. But that comes with a lot of challenges. And just to clarify for people, so the, the fire department and the police department were together before Correct. in this building. Correct. And then they they built a new facility, and, and so now you're in here by yourself. Correct. Yep. So that there was a big benefit to that because we gained some uh, square footage for, for uh, office space and, and, and things like that. So that was good. But again, you still have the shortcomings. It's a lot of safety issues, right? There's there's uh, air quality issues. There's you know handicap accessibility issues. There's just a lot of things, even electrical there's some um, concerns and issues with the electrical. Um, so at, through all that, then uh, uh, that, that cost was extremely high to even consider remodeling or, or, or renovating and, and things like that. So, um, so then all of a sudden this grant came up and we thought, well, let's write for it and see what happens. Um, why spend a bunch of money on an older building that still will not be a 60-year building? It'll be, you know, a 10, 20-year building. And so... Uh, we got lucky and we got the grant. Amazing opportunity. And uh, without that grant, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, there's mm -hmm. just no way. And so, um, so we went from there or whatever. And it's it's been quite a ride. Um, we've spent, like Tim, like you said, Tim, a couple years on what are our needs. We went through an evaluation of every single room and what what the size should be, um, what the the next six years will bring, which has been the hardest hardest piece because I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I do have some ideas of where we've been and where we're going and uh, so we've used used those tools and those ideas but uh, we went through a couple different uh, redrawings and, and uh, added square footage, removed square footage, talked about what it costs today versus what it costs to add on down the road and it's it's a minimum of three times the cost minimum. Right now what's known is three times more to do it later than it is to do it now. And so when you're looking at those big numbers, let's just say nine million, you know, we'll, we'll find that happy, not happy, but that medium, right? So nine million dollars, um, if we if we're have concerns on making that work today, you know, in 10 years, if that, if we don't do it right today, and in 10 years we have to add on to it, that's just gonna compound that price, right? It's just gonna continue to get worse. 
and uh, you know you've heard Th uh, John Thompson comment that they were going to do they were going to build a new station years ago uh, before they bought this current fire station, um, and uh, I'm sure we'd still be having this conversation. There would be add-ons or something because it, it's been thirty you know, almost thirty yeah. years, right? So to listen to John at some of the meetings talk about John's longtime member of the fire Correct. department and. 40 former, some years. Yeah, formerly in the police department as well, but um, knows the city has been through the history and has talked about you know, the fire department was downtown and a couple different buildings, and every time they moved up to try and increase the space that they had, they outgrew it. And uh, when they moved into this building, an old beer warehouse, by the way, um, right. you know, he said they moved in here and thought, oh boy, we'll never, we'll never outgrow this. This is, all, this is huge. Right. And, and here they are. Right. So... Yeah. So you're trying to look forward and sort of... We're trying to look forward. We're trying prevent, to add... Pre prevent outgrowing that Correct. in, in Correct. 10 years. Correct. You know, and again, you don't have the crystal ball. Things can change, um, you know, but we are trying to implement in all those safety things, extra space, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but, uh, you know, this current building that we're in, a lot of stuff was used. They repurposed things out of an old building. And uh, so they've... As far as the fire department, yeah. fire station, a lot, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know there's, there was a I, lot. I of, remember we're sitting in the training room here at, at the fire department, but uh, these glass doors that are behind me, there's a wall of glass doors. And, and I remember John telling the story about that um, those came from another building, mm -hmm. that the fire, the fire department members themselves went out, and I don't remember what building it was, but right. these, these glass uh, doors in the wall here were, were Repurposed, They're, and the fire fire department did that themselves. They oh, yeah. brought them in. They Almost put them in. Almost all the labor was yeah. donated time. You know, so yeah, it's just there's. It's been a. It's it's and it's been a. It's been a decent building. It's been a good building. It's home. And uh, I've I've often told people when they we've asked why why do you need a new building, and I'll be the first to admit it. Myself and the assistant chief Glenn Martin were against a new building when they started talking about going that direction, and because it's home. It's home. It's all I've ever known. It's been on for almost 26 years now, and so it's it's gonna. It was an adjustment to 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 be okay with that change, and uh, you know a lot of people that know me too know that I'm very tight with money and I'm very careful. If it needs to be spent, it needs to be spent. But if we don't need it, you know, let's not do it. And so it's been a tough road for me as far as getting over that change and you know moving to a different facility, a new home, to. Uh, Looking at spending that kind of money because money isn't money isn't easy to come by, right? But but I also know that if we're going to do it, we need to do it right. So I'm not going to be that person that settles for our firefighters, for our community, for one thing, and then five years from now come around and say, "Oh, we were wrong. We need more money. We need to add on. This was done wrong." So on and so forth. And and I know you looked at. Um Maybe I'll put it this way. Maybe you tell me if this is right or not. But um, I think if the if the you know the five and a quarter million dollars hadn't come along, you probably would make this building work a little longer. And nope. you know you've got the fire tower, you uh, training tower that you built next door here just recently. You know you would probably keep making improvements or keep putting band aids on things and figure out how to make it work nope. until you just couldn't do it anymore. And Correct. that might get you another five years or maybe a little longer. Correct. But you would probably have to build something anyway. Correct. Absolutely. This 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 building will not uh, be sufficient long term, the current building that we're in. Um, could we make it work for a few more years? You can you can do all kinds of things, right? Um, we've done that for years already, right? We've we've mandated things, we've made do some of the things we'll walk around and look at or whatever, I'll, I'll explain. We, we've made it work, right? So making something work doesn't make it right. Um, but yes, you know, if, if, if you know, we, could, we could put it off a year, two years, three years, you know, whatever that might be, but eventually we need to build a station. So if we don't choose to do it now, that $5.25 million is gone. And my point to the, to, to the public is that if, if we can't make it work with having $5.25 million to help with it, Let's just say 10 years from now, we, we, we decide to build a fire station. It'll be 12, 15, or if not more, a million dollars. Well, if we can't come up with that 4 million or just under 4 million to, to, to help with the 5.25, we're 15 million. That's, that's just yeah. insane. Those numbers are just insane. Yeah. 
So the finances, and I'll, I'll put some more of that, and you know, hopefully in, in the, my article here. But um, you know, so you're looking at making up, you know, three, three and a half, maybe four million dollars. And and to just to clarify for people, you're not talking about just the city of Viroqua. You serve three other townships. Three townships: town of Viroqua, town of Franklin, and town of Jefferson. Um, we have had talks with them on how if they could help, what that might look like, mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. So we've started some conversations with them. And we'll continue to do that. But yes, we do serve uh, 152 square miles, and uh, it's about 8,600 people. So it's so that's it's you know decent. I think well, the city of Platteville is what nine thousand or right yeah, about that. Yeah, that you know. So you're similar as far as the fire district coverage right. of, in terms of people. Right. So um, so the I know the city is working through possible ways to f come up with the money for that additional gap. Um, you know, whether there's additional uh, dollars somewhere in the city budget to help offset that so it doesn't all go on the tax levy or the townships chip in a certain amount, try and get that, you know, three to four million down to right. maybe a couple million or two and a half million um, or additional grants, um, some other monies. Uh, so essentially you're, you're, you're talking about a, a nine or nine and a half million dollar building for Three million, maybe on the tax levy. Maybe it's that lower than that, depending on where those funds right. come from. So, right. um, if you look at it that way, you know it's that's not a bad deal. Right, right. Well, and you know, on the other piece to this, so there, the function is one thing. And that's when we designed this building; it was all about function. It's not about frill. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to be a nice looking building. Don't get me wrong, but we we concentrated on spending the dollars on things that would keep the firefighters safe, make them feel at home because it is their second home they spend a lot of time here and uh, um, but we, we've got to take care of our, our firefighters we really do um, the, the amount of work that they put in for their community and what they get back I mean, we, we, we have to make sure that they're taken care of um, today so, and in the future so talk about that a little bit because that's one of the interesting things I've heard as I listen, listen to the meetings you're you're is it the architect the person that's designing yep. your building brought some of these issues up when, when he was uh, presenting the design to the council, but talked a lot about um, the fact that rural rural fire departments, and I guess you can call us a rural fire department, no. is they're, they're, they're mostly volunteer-based. Now, you're a full-time employee. You right. did add one other full-time employee right. just in the last year or two. Nope. Um, so you've got two uh, you know, salaried employees. Right. Um, the rest is all volunteer. Um, and his point was, that's going to go away at some point. That's just the way the trends are, are moving, that, that volunteer fire departments, the, the people are busy with their work and their lives, and it's just less and less people are volunteering. Yep, absolutely. And we've seen, we've got some members, and, and we know of some people that they're working second jobs to make ends meet, right? And so their free time, let's call it free time, from away from their family and their day job or whatever, uh, they're spending it working somewhere else to make some extra money. So we need to find ways to, uh, you know, entice them to, to be on the fire, fire department, right, and to, to help their community. Uh, the firefighters do get paid for their time when they're here. Um, so if they're not technically true volunteers. But, but talk about that pay. I heard some of the dollar amounts. Right. Since. right. So it depends on the level of, of uh, status or whatever. A new firefighter until they get trained is, is minimum wage. So seven and a quarter. Um, as they move up and get more training, uh, your your average firefighter makes thirteen something an hour, maybe thirteen ninety nine. Don't quote me exactly, but it's it's less than fourteen. Um, the fire officers make a little bit more than that because of the requirements and the, the responsibilities and so on and so forth. But so yeah, there are there are businesses that you can go and work part time and make more money doing it. So that that wage is paid when they're on a call, correct? Where they yep. do training, correct? Those you know, anytime they meetings, maintenance. Trainings um, and then responding to calls. So the, the the point that the gentleman in the meeting was making, and I've heard other people make, is that um, you know we can we can extend the time that the the city actually gets to utilize a volunteer structure versus right. a paid structure. I mean, the cost to have a fully paid, staffed fire department like a larger city would be right. way more. So yeah, it's it's been proven time and time again, and of course there's no guarantee on how long we could run volunteer. I would suspect for, for quite a while yet. 
but uh, I would see some full-time members before I retire. Um, but full, 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 full-time uh, going full-time would be, you know, it's going to be a few years out. But the longer we can, half a million dollars or something, easy, I mean, easy, easy, half a million dollars, because to run an engine, you've got to have at least four firefighters. So um, that's that's bare minimum, right? So that's one crew, and uh, so four full-time people doesn't take much to do the math, and then you got to be twenty-four-seven. You know, and so you start adding up all those numbers. It's yeah, yeah. Waits to a so lot. your idea with this new facility, and I've heard you talk about it, is, and you've talked a lot of other other fire departments about this. That you know, a lot of what a lot of them are doing is, is building this facility really to be more accommodating to that volunteer right. model and to make it more palatable for people to volunteer and spend their time right. and doing things to try and draw more people into the facility, younger people. To get them to volunteer. Correct. Yep, absolutely. So we ended up, and I've talked, I don't know how many fire chiefs, but we ended up going to five different fire stations to uh, look at their design and build. Uh, Fort Atkinson, um, Spring Green, Cross Plains, um, Brona, and Coma recently. Coma just had just finished their station. And talking to all those chiefs, they all had the exact same stories on the need for a new fire station, the need to be prepared for the next step, the need to be prepared for the future, uh, removing any extra stresses that, uh, that come with the job. There's an extreme amount of stress that comes with this job and, and what we put the, the firefighters through. And so um, I always say, you know, the last thing they want to do is come to the station, squeegee off the floors, or to not have a piece of equipment work right, or to worry about putting on their dirty gear because it's hanging behind the fire truck's exhaust. And all those things, if you can remove all those things and make them more comfortable, it's better. Mental health, physically, uh, um, you know, all that stuff is super important. And so back to those fire chiefs, they all said the exact same thing. Make sure you have enough space. Make sure you have enough accommodations. Make sure that you build for the future. You know, it's just all these pieces and parts, and uh, they're all success stories, right? Um, one, of, one of the fire chiefs, they, they ha it hasn't been that long since they finished their new fire station uh, upgrade and, and add-on and stuff. And... They're already out of space, and part of it is to do with their their mission changed things things changed or whatever um, that they kind of knew was coming down the road, but not that quick, and so they had planned for it, but not again not that fast. And so we, there's a happy medium, right? We don't want to build this thing too big, too much. That that's that's wasteful, right? But it's also 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 wasteful if we don't build it um, big enough, right? And so. We're trying really hard to find that happy medium. And I believe we have, right? Um, it comes with a cost. But if we if we um, are pushed or for you know if we have to lower that price and bring that down, we will be removing safety pieces. We'll be removing future pieces, um, and guaranteed we'll be back to the drawing board in a, you know five ten years whatever asking for more. Right, and and. I know you said you don't have a crystal ball. It's hard to predict what the department's going to look like, but but there are some indications. There are some trends right. that I, right. I know you've talked about. Um, you know, the number of calls has just gone up dramatically. Talk a little bit about it. Yep, yep. So in 2021, before we started doing first responder helping with medical, of course it was the COVID years and things like that, but we ran 293 calls. Um, some people say, well, that's not a lot, but it is. It's a lot. That's almost, let's just say, one a day, right? So we're asking our volunteer firefighters to leave work, home, whatever, family stuff, at least once a day. Um, we started medical, and that was mostly fire-related calls, so alarm calls, car accidents, you know, that kind of structure fires, um, and some medical. We've always helped, if need be, on medical for bigger incidents. Um, and then in 2022, around June, we started helping with medical with first responders. And the sole purpose of that was is when the ambulance wasn't available or um, it was a larger event and so on and so forth, we felt that we needed to fill that void and we had the capability to do that. And so we did. We ran people through the training. We bought some equipment. Most of the equipment's been donated, uh, uh, donated money, you know, fundraising, some grants, things like that. Um, and uh, so then um, since tw June of 2022 till... 
that year ended up ended up being 466 calls. So a little over six months worth of medical plus our normal fire we went to 466, 293 to 466. This year we're trending to break 600 calls total. So that's it'll be more than double in less than two years. Yeah. yeah. You know? So now that number is you know there's there's a, there was a weekend about a month ago we went the crew went on nine nine calls in one weekend. So again, well, that's, does that sound like a lot? Depends on how you look at it, right? So you and I have the weekend off from our day job, and uh, instead of enjoying your weekend before the next week, we're interrupted nine times that whole weekend to go out and help someone. Every one of our members love it. Every one of our members are willing to do it. That is not a negative, but I think it's important for the public to know that you've got 30-some people in this building that care enough to give away their weekend to do this. And so what can we do to make them feel like that's of value to keep them enticed to and, be doing and, it? And especially since you added the medical service, uh, you know, I, I think some, one of the things I've talked to some people that, that do this and is that um, there's a mental aspect to this. 100%. There, there 100%. is a, there's a, you know, a burnout or a fatigue, whatever you want to call it, aspect to this that... Um, I know one person I was talking to went on, um, this was about halfway through the year, and they had already been to 15 calls where someone was having, they coded or their heart their, attacks, their heart, codes, yep, heart stopped. And, and CPR was required. That's mm -hmm. 15 times in half a year. That's, that's like combat level right. of, you know, it's not... Exactly no, the same, no, but it's no, but it's it, it's, it's a lot. That's stressful. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. Because most, mo unfortunately, most of those don't turn out. Every once in a while, you get lucky, um, and that's maybe a bad word to use, but you know, so it does. It takes a toll. It's like, what are we doing? Are we doing any good? You know, there's so, all those thoughts. So a good chunk of those calls, somebody's passed away. That's that's yep. that's a lot for somebody to. Yep. You know, that, that's a lot of calls yep. in half a year. Working with families, seeing what they go through, you know, they've, we've got our own personal lives, right? Um, personal stresses and stuff like that, and so there's a lot of good too. And then right? to come back into your, if you are on a weekend, say, try to join a family event or something, that's a lot of mm -hmm. a lot to take on. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yep. You know, and 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 on the flip side too, there there's a lot of good to this job. I, that we love it, we really do. We love being there for the community. We love, you know. We've, we've saved many houses over the years. We've saved many lives over the years. We've, you know, helped people in so many ways, you know, and so that's what keeps us going too, right? It's it, There is feel good to it too. Um, helping the public where they can, yeah. Yeah, so that, that aspect to, you know, that I guess that you're talking about the feel good part of it, but the, the positive aspect of a volunteer, especially a volunteer, really even a paid uh, department, I suppose, is that it's definitely close-knit. Right. and uh, It's your second family. It really is. Right. Well, in being in this room, you know, I've been at a few meetings in this room, and it really, I think you have to be here, and it kind of strikes you that, you know, they, they, guys come here and hang out sometimes, or a lot of times, right? right? I mean, th th there's a social part to this. Nope. Yep. Sunday mornings, they, it's about a year ago now, Sunday mornings they started doing our uh, coffee. So Sunday morning, whoever can show up shows up, and they sit down or sit around and, and talk and have coffee and you know, just kind of relax because it's their downtime and they need that. Um, a lot of times when we're coming together, it's stressful, right? And so we need some of that uh, downtime or, or fun time, let's say, to uh, relax and decompress and so on and so forth. So it's things like that is playing cards after drill night. It's uh, hanging out in the training room after drill or whatever, a meeting, and, and just, just small talk, you know, because, again, it's your second family. So let's talk about specifics of... Uh of the new building and the design of that. Yep. There's been some people question, you know, you, you had a really basic sort of best guess, uh, kind of a, just a blank box initially yep. that got a, refined and then it got kind of fancy and yep. some things added to it. And then you took some of that out. Yep. Um, and, and, and now we're at a point where I think you've sort of said, this is what we need. Yep. And, uh, so some of the things in there that people have looked at, and gone, do you really need that? You know, um, you've got some dorm rooms in there. Right. Um, you've got some spaces that aren't, you know, they're more 
maybe social or trying to, and a history part to it. Nope. Um, kind of explain why why you nope. included some of those things. So so this building is going to be uh, more than double the current fire station. So some you know people will be like, oh, how is that, how is that possible? Why you know why do you need that? Well, it starts out, and I'll, I'll talk about those key pieces that you said too. But I think it's also important to talk about so many of the things in this current building share a room to do another function. You probably remember me talking about this at one of the previous meetings. So we wash our gear that saves our lives in a, in a fire. We wash that gear next to where we store our oils and our gasoline and things like that. So that's one share. Um, there's multiples of them. But uh, it's just a good example, in my opinion, of gear that protects us is being washed next to petroleum products. You would never consider doing that in your own home. would hope not, anyways. Um, the other thing is, is our gear. All of our gear hangs on the walls in the bays. and All the diesel exhaust, all that other stuff from, from the equipment s soaks into our gear. Um, again, that's, that's just crazy, right? It's the best we've got. So we've, this new station uh, accounts for all of those pieces. So the gear has its own room, so it stays clean, safe. Uh, our cleaning room that we clean the gear and our air packs that we use to breathe in fires, all that, that's got its own room. Um, um, and I can go on and on and on and on. And so each that adds up square footage, but it gives it a purpose. It separates things, it keeps it clean, it keeps it safe, um, it gives it purpose. Um, there are reasons fire stations are designed. Correct, way. correct. We, we didn't come up with this design on our own. We didn't magically make this up. Um, we took pieces and parts from uh, the five fire stations I talked about that we went out and saw, and Keller, the, the builder, uh, or the designer, um, obviously had in input too on all of the stations that they've designed over the years and gave us guidance or whatever. But yes, this is everything that we're doing to the station is not something that we dreamt up or, or just think that we need. We're the only ones that need it. it. It's been tried and true and your average fire new fire station being built today has these things. Um, so um, kind of going on to let's talk about the history room. Um, you can call it a history room, you can call it a museum, you can call it a welcome center, you can call it multiple things, right? So, because it's it's all of those pieces. So we've got three pieces of equipment that um, it's uh, our first pumper that Vroke ever bought. It's, uh, oh, what's the name? I can't remember the guy's name. Um, so it's right around 1884, right? I mean, it's way back when we started. And uh, it's got history. I mean, people, people love to talk about it. People love to see it. Um, I've got story after story we could talk about, but anyways, it's they're they're backed into a pole shed, covered in dust and old equipment and just whatever. And uh, we've got that LaFrance, one of the city's first engines, um, 1947, and uh, that we take out on parades, so mm -hmm. a lot of the community has seen it, and we get nothing but you know thumbs up and that's great, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so we'd like to have a place to put that. Bring it back into our own building. It used to be here, but we ran out of space, so we've moved it over to the pole shed, city's pole shed. We'd like to get that back out so people can appreciate it and enjoy it. And there's stories, there's history, there's education, there's, you know, if, for you to know where you're going, you need to know where you came from, right? And so that is it, right? That that is the start to that story. And uh, so we thought having square footage in this building, we, we need to have, we need to bring it back. So be it a bay, another bay, or be it this room. That you can set it up and you can have pictures and you can have uh, old equipment and and truly use it as history truly use it as education recruitment retention i mean the, there's no end to it right square footage is square footage um so if if we don't have a welcome center we either leave it in the pole shed which i know the city city uh, streets and utilities would love to have their space back um we could leave it there or we could build another bay you know and just Put it in some corner over there um, in the new fire station, or we actually do something with it. And museums, welcome centers, history rooms, whatever you want to call it again, most new fire stations are implementing that. Tomas got one, um, Rona had one, um, Spring Green's got one. So three, uh, at least three of the five have it. Um, I know one, one other one didn't have it. But so again, it's nothing new. It's you plan, you, you know, in my opinion, that'll save us money long term because, again, the recruitment, retention, the education um, piece of it. So it might 
might spend money today, but it's going to save money down the road, some way, shape, or form, guaranteed. Um, get into the day room. Uh, that's a place to hang out. Right now, it's a conference room that we sit in. Um, you can be upstairs, you know, in a, in a multi-purpose room or whatever. Um, but this will be this will be set up to where you can you can come in and relax and hang out and talk. Uh, we can use it for training if we need to. We could break out sessions. Uh, there's a lot of times during drills that uh, we'll, we need to break up in three, four groups to get the, 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 the training done or whatever. Uh, that'll be a room that we can use. So it's a multi-purpose room too, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a couch yeah. where you can go sit and hang out. It's, sure. you know, there's other purpose for it too. So um, the bedrooms, the sleeping quarters, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's probably the one that's that gets the biggest question, I, I would say. Yeah, probably some people would say, well, you're not a full-time fire department. Why Correct. do you need Correct. you volunteer at this point? Correct. So at this point, they'd be correct, right? We're, we're not full-time. We don't need places for the firefighters to sleep overnight, um, so on and so forth. So then you, you, you look at the future, right? And so, or, or even the past. We have had people sleep here currently at the fire station. There used to be a couple couches upstairs that they'd sleep on. They'd come in this training room, this, this room here, and they'd put three, four chairs together and lay on it for different reasons. Could be bad weather, could be, you know, early class the next day, whatever it might be. Um, so it has been used um, in the past, or people have slept here in the past. So having a place for that to happen um, in the future, you know, I think that would happen more. Um, I kind of mentioned in a meeting, you know, uh, we have instructors come in sometimes to do things, and one of the requirements is, is a, put them up for a night to stay you know, or two, you know, so in a hotel room. Not a big deal, but it could be, it could be a tool that we could use or whatever and, and uh, put them up at the fire station versus a hotel. Yeah, you know, not big savings, but, you know, so we're trying to look at all that. So that's all the base things, and, and there's more, but that's the base things. Then beyond that, like we said earlier, I have no doubt in my mind that we will see full-time firefighters here. Um, could be a few of them before I retire, uh, but definitely before, you know, before a long time, we'll we'll have some people here. So they'll need then they'll need it. They'll absolutely need that space. And so we've looked at what it would could we do it without it now, uh, and add on later. Could we do um, you know build it out you know have have a, sh a shell and finish it down the road and put up some more walls or whatever. We've we've looked at all that, and uh, you know yeah it would save money. Cut that out. We'd have a little less function or whatever right now. Um, but what does it cost in the future? And so we, we talked to a department, or I didn't, but we, some of my connections and stuff had a conversation, and they had they had made that same mistake, and they didn't put it in. And I don't know how long it went, but it was a very short period of time where they ended up needing sleeping quarters. And um, it was like three or four times the cost to put that addition on. Um, I don't remember if it was the same story, but they ended up buying a house across the street of the fire station on a busy road, and that's where they slept. And so every time they got called, they'd have to run across the busy highway to go on a call. So there's things you can do, but is it, again, is it right? Is that the right way to do it? You know, and so I, the other piece to not preparing is if, if that day comes where we need that, you don't just put on a sleeping quarters within a couple months, right? And some of the changes happen that fast. So now what do you do, right? So it, take you, it could take you a year to put on those sleeping quarters. What do you do in the year? What do you do in the meantime? You know, Again, crystal ball. I'm not saying it's happening tomorrow. I, I don't know that, but the writing is on the wall. And after talking to that many chiefs, and they're, you know, some, some are bigger departments, some are smaller departments, you know, that we tried to get a mix in there, and every one of them had the exact same story. And and you've mentioned too in uh, in some of the meetings that you know, uh, first of all the, the the fire department serves a bigger area than I think most people realize with those three additional townships. But also you have to look at how Roke was moving and how we're kind of set up. We've got uh, you know, another business park. We've got another chunk of land that uh, the VDA has purchased that they're uh, trying to promote uh, residential housing in there. We've got uh, another housing, you know, a three-story uh, housing unit that's that's looks like it's uh, pretty certain to happen uh, in the next year or two. Um, so, you know, Roke was growing, and uh, there growing. there are some things 
some pieces in place that show they could grow quite a bit here in the next you right. know, four or five years. So Correct. that's also going to have an impact probably. Right. And, and my job is to keep the community safe, right, and to make sure that um, people's needs are met when it comes to, to health and, and safety and, and things like that. And so each of those things that you had mentioned do bring a fair amount of calls that will be added to not only the fire department, the fire or medical, but the police department, the library, the park, every department that the city has, streets, you know, I, I, I don't want to miss anybody, but every one of them will, that'll, ta that'll, that'll uh, add workload to every single one of them. Some in different ways, some more than others, you know, or whatever, but so when, 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 when the city makes decisions, and I'm not just talking to council, I'm talking to the public in general, when they make decisions, good decisions to grow the city and to, to be vibrant and you know, all those pieces that everybody wants, those all come at a cost, right? Those all come with extra work for everybody in some way, shape, or form. And, and, and it's positive work, right? But if I don't plan for that now, I'm not doing my job. You know, it could be five years, it could be 10 years, it could be, it could be the next fire chief. You know, it, what I do today is not only for the current mem members of the fire department, or, or the, the community today, it's it's 60 years from now, right? Mm -hmm. So my decisions and the city's decisions and everybody that's involved in this, it's not for today. It's for it's for 60 years from now, 20 years from now, whatever, whatever date you want to put on it. Um, so that's what we got to be thinking about, right? I do not want to go down in the books of not being prepared to protect my neighbor. And and in terms of funding, you know, I've I've heard. I don't know if it was you or somebody else in a meeting mentioned that, uh, you know, in terms of bang for the dollar, the taxpayers, you guys do a lot of fundraising on your own. I mean, the, the fire tower, the training tower, a lot of that was, was donated money. Uh, two, what was the final cost? Two hundred and. It's like, don't quote me again, about two twenty-five, two thirty ish so somewhere that, in there. So that you know, the having that training facility here versus nope. in Cross or some other, you know, all the local fire departments can use that. Nope. Um, but, but you guys do fundraisers all the time. You raffle the ATVs. And I, I heard somebody say in a meeting, I, I hadn't thought of it this way, but, you know, uh, you don't see too many other city departments doing a raffle. You know, Correct. the police department's not doing a raffle to buy a squad car. Correct. Correct. So you guys are, you guys are doing a lot beyond just the volunteer part. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's, I'm proud of everybody that's been involved. I'm proud of the donors. I'm proud of the, the firefighters sure on, on putting in the extra work or whatever but all of our brush trucks uh, our two rescue vehicles that go on medical calls our second command truck um, multiple pieces of equipment um, smaller pieces of equipment and so on and so forth were all fundraised or grant monies paid for um, that's huge that's just huge it saves the the taxpayer on their tax bill a lot of money and um, so we're pretty proud of that and uh, City, the townships are super supportive of equipment meeting our needs, and uh, so I definitely got a. I, I, I want to be positive about that, right? Because they are. We've got great equipment. We've got great engines, great ladders, ladder truck. You know all that other stuff. We've got good gear on our backs. Mm -hmm. You know, keep things that keep us safe. Um, so that support is wonderful. It absolutely and, and is. And the, the cost of this equipment is not cheap. No, it, no. it what what. I, what was the last engine you guys bought? It was five hundred thousand. Yep. So the townships bought an engine, let's say five years ago, um, for about six hundred thousand. That came with some equipment on it, um, so hoses and stuff like that. Some, and uh, so the city, the city's engine is twenty, around twenty years old. So a twenty-year-old fire truck saving lives, still a good truck. But what happens is then, then they get harder to repair. We've got a thirty-year-old truck that we've kind of struggled at times to keep it running. When things get that old, they're not as reliable, right? So back to your question, um, $600,000 for that truck about five years ago. The city is looking to, you know, uh, place an engine within the next few years, and uh, it'll actually be a smaller engine than what the townships bought, and it'll probably cost over 800000 So in five years, 2, 000, over 200000 yeah, so personnel, but is one thing, but equipment is Correct. also a huge cost. Right. Um, it's an unlike business. some other departments, right, where 
and there's probably more, more your budget is probably more equipment heavy versus Correct. payroll, which is Correct. usually the opposite. Our, yes, I would, yes, yes. More of our budget is operation than uh, payroll. Payroll is actually a smaller piece of it. You know, we, we spend, as far not including myself and the administrative assistant, um, the rest of the members cost probably maybe a little bit more to have 30 firefighters. I call it 30 full-time firefighters. I really do because they're available 24-7, 365. Maybe not all of them, but we cover 24-7, 365. So for what it costs to train them, uh, meetings, you know, working on the trucks, and responding to 600 and some calls is just a little bit more than probably your average full-time employee, one full-time employee with benefits. So if you if you look at it that way, it's pretty it's pretty economical, right? You know, and and these 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 firefighters are professionals. They are. They're they're trained. They're educated. Um, every once in a while, you hear someone say, you know professional full-time firefighter and then you've got a volunteer firefighter. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, we, I know for a fact that some volunteer firefighters have more training than full-time firefighters. Again, not knocking, I just want people to understand what they've got, right? And uh, it's what you make it, right? Their hearts are in it. And we're here for you. So talk a little bit about the relationship with the townships. I know some people have mentioned, you know, sort of hinting at the idea that, wow, well, they're not, you know, they're kind of riding on the back of the city. You know, they're yeah. getting a huge benefit. You know, we're, we're picking up the tab for, you know, you don't look at it that way. Absolutely not. So that is the, the that is a huge false statement. And uh, I want to make sure that, that everybody understands that. So the, the townships and the city have a, a pretty solid agreement. Um, it's a simple agreement, but it's solid. So a lot of the equipment that we share, so our bunker gear, our air packs, that kind of stuff, um, they pay 50% of that cost. Um, they pay for um, their own fire trucks. So they buy certain fire trucks. They buy them, maintain them. They pay that full price, as does the city. The city has their own trucks. Right now, actually, the townships own more fire trucks in this building than the city does. So they, one could say that they've invested more into equipment than the city has. When the city buys a new engine, that tide will change. It's a give and take. You probably remember me saying, they both need each other, and uh, they need to take care of each other. So, um, and there's many things. They pay 50% of a lot of things. They pay 50% of the uh, payroll for drills and meetings, uh, mutual aid calls. Um, and then when, you know, they pay for their own calls. So if there's a call out in the town of Roqua, the town of Roqua pays that, that uh, labor. If the city has a call in the city, the city pays for that labor. Um, all of the equipment, be it owned by the city or the townships, they share it both ways. So our big ladder truck that's owned by the city goes out into the townships. Not a lot. Uh, certain fires, uh, grain bin fires, you know, things like that that are way in the air. And every city call that we have, uh, structure fire type related, the, the township's $600,000 engine goes to that. So it's a give and take. If, if, if you were to separate that relationship, both sides would have to come up with lots of money to fill in that void. You know, and so to be fair, they're, 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 carrying, they're carrying a lot of their weight. Um, conversations need to be had about the new fire station, and, and they're willing to have those. Um, it's an unpleasant conversation for all, um, but it has to happen. And you increase your volunteer base by having three. Correct. You know, they, they, Correct. You, Probably got volunteers from those Correct. townships as well. Yep, a few, a few. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, but yes, it's 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 a partnership. It really is. So maybe we'll go out and take a look at the, some of the things in the facility here. Some of the things you guys yep. have talked about that are concerns, and and just give people an idea of you yep. know it, it's you're not you're not out of space, but it's tight. Right. I mean, yep. Is that accurate? No, absolutely. I mean, it's it's it's. And you'll see some things. It works, right? It works. Um, there is no more room for another truck. We don't plan on buying another truck. Um, this winter, again, we'll have to move a truck to a different location because it won't, it won't fit in here. Um, so we're, we're into that a little bit to where we're moving trucks around in the winter because of the weather, right? Cold and stuff like that. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no extra room. That's why we're sharing doing multi-purpose rooms, right? 
Um, so yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, if anybody has a question or wants to learn more about this, welcome them to come and, and, and meet with me. Um, stop by sometime, call. You know, if you got a question, um, something that maybe you heard, um, you want to see something up close. Absolutely, you're more than welcome to come here. I, I, I love giving out information. Facts are important. All right. Okay. Let's go do the tour. Perfect. One thing that will be addressed in the new station is you can see our gear racks are lined up against the walls and uh, either behind a truck or next to the truck. This new station will have a room that's dedicated to that. One, to keep it clean, but two, it's a lot safer. So, for instance, getting dressed behind a fire truck is not a good idea, right? Um, all it would take is for someone to put it in the wrong gear and back over someone. Um, so you've got, you've got that hazard. Um, if, if uh, again, having it in a separate room would eliminate that. Most new fire stations are implementing a, a gear room um, with ventilation and, and so on and so forth. The other safety factor, too, the, this is our bay, our fire bays. We've got five doors, uh, 14 trucks. Uh, like I said before, some of them are owned by the city, some of them are owned by the township, and a bunch of them were paid for by the fire department, which we, we donate to the Viroqua Fire Department for its use. But you can see the trucks are stacked, right? The trucks are two deep, uh, over a couple bays are three deep trucks. So for instance, if this, if this truck right here needs to get out, you have to move two trucks to get it out. Um, the other thing is people have to run between trucks to get to another truck. And if one starts moving, some of them are pretty tall, you've got a safety concern there, right? People passing through vehicles. Um, with the new station, each truck will have its own separate door to leave. So there's no more moving trucks out of the way to get a truck to go on an emergency. Um, no more passing between trucks to where you, you could have a potential safety, safety issue. Um, so again, real key things that it's all about safety, right? That's our job. Our job is to keep the community safe. It's definitely my job to make sure that the firefighters are safe. So in, in, the, in the fire service, uh, there's a lot of health related issues with that. Um, fire, smoke, um, different chemicals, um, bloodborne pathogen type stuff for medical calls. All that stuff um, is a danger to, to, to a firefighter. And so we've got a lot of safety pieces in place, right? I mean, we train, we practice, we've got equipment to keep us safe for that kind of stuff, but they are exposed to some of that. And so the concern is, is that we're taking care of it when we're on a call, but we're not taking care of it when we come back to the station. So toxins from the exhaust of the trucks, off-gassing of equipment, the gas in the, in the trucks themselves, um, that's all, we've got our gear sitting right next to it all, right? So it's, it's, it's absorbing that stuff, and it's been proven. It's, it's been abs this is not something I dreamt up either. This has been proven that, that your gear will absorb that stuff, and then it touches your skin, right? So your skin is absorbing it. So we, we have to not only protect ourselves out on the, ha the, the emergency or on the call, we have to protect ourselves when we come back to our house too. This has got to be a safe place for us. This would be the, the, the safest place so that we're, we're, we're not exposing ourselves when we come back home. Having facilities to take showers, wash your clothes, so you don't take it back to your house is, is a crucial piece too. Um, and uh, so again, this new station adds that, adds those features so that, that I don't, if I get contaminated with something, I'm not taking it back home to my kids or my, my, my wife. So um, yeah, it's just, again, function, safety, everything about it revolves around that. So this is kind of our, our maintenance shop. Our generator for the building is in here, which technically should be outside. If you come around the corner here, this is our uh, washers and dryer for our, our gear that I was talking about. And right next to it is our flame cabinet with gas, oil, um, different things like that. And so, again, having separate rooms, having a laundry room, having a mechanical room that, uh, uh, you know, maintenance room that, that keeps your tools, your flammables and stuff separate. Those are all huge, huge health things. Our firefighters expose themselves or have the potential to be exposed to 
a lot of hazards. The last thing we need to do is bring them back to the fire station and add more hazards on top of that. It's just that's just insane, you know. So this I mean this is an example, right? And so th this is where our breathing air is. So uh, we we can refill our air packs. It's what allows us to go into structure fires, put fires out, search and rescue that kind of stuff. But then we also wash wash. This is our clean room for washing our masks, our face masks, um, for our air packs. And then you can see we've got um, our fryer and our electrical room all is packed in one room. That's building code violations, big time. Health risks. <laughs> There's just a lot of issues with it, but. We're, we're out of space, so we make the best of it. Um, that will all have separate spaces um, for function and so on and so forth. 